The Xbox Series X is powerful, efficient, and well-cooled. What is up everybody, welcome back to another video. If you're new to this channel and you wanna see update on everything next generation, maybe consider subscribing if you like what you see. I would really appreciate it and it would really help this channel grow. I'll be getting all the next gen consoles on day one and making tons of videos on those, so look forward to those going forward. So Digital Foundry released their video today talking about the Xbox Series X, its thermals and power consumption. It's a 17 minute video and if you wanna see all of it, I'll put the link in the description below. But I just wanted to talk about it because it's all great news for the Xbox Series X and basically what they are saying is the Xbox Series X is a very powerful console that is very well cooled and extremely efficient. They went over a lot of stuff starting off with the storage space and it's confirmed that the Xbox Series X provides 802 gigabytes of usable storage on the internal SSD. And that one terabyte Seagate expansion card will give you 920 gigabytes of usable space. So they started off by showing us data transfer speeds and pretty much stuff we've already seen, stuff we already know. And that one terabyte Seagate drive, that memory card for the Xbox Series X is by far going to be the fastest way to transfer data. But there's definitely other options out there that won't be too too bad like an external NVMe SSD or an external SATA SSD and then finally at the very lowest of that you have that mechanical hard drive that will be the longest obviously to transfer data but I mean it's definitely still a good solution at the end of the day if you have nothing else for your backwards compatibility for playing Xbox One games and stuff like that hopefully in the near future like I've said in other videos in a year maybe a year and a half those one terabyte cards are going to go down in price because they are going to go down eventually You're just going to have to wait to get them at a reasonable price because right now with them being like 240 or something like that I know in Canada it's like $300 for one of those. There's no way I'm picking that up. And I think for a lot of people, unless obviously they have the funds to be able to go out and get that, or they have the need to go out and get that, it's probably best just to wait a little bit before picking up those memory cards. But that's not where the good news comes in. The good news comes in after that when they talked about the efficiency of the Xbox Series X, as well as the thermals of the console itself. That's really interesting because you would think that the Xbox Series X being such a powerful beast of a console that it would be drawing a lot of power, way more than the Xbox One X, but that is is not the case and we can see this here. So they started off their power test with Dirt 5 and Yakuza Like a Dragon as we know our games for the Xbox Series X at launch. The Yakuza Like a Dragon at 1440p 60 which draws about 140 to 160 watts with very rare spikes up to 170 watts. For Dirt 5 there was mostly in the 160 watts territory with spikes at over 170 watts of points. So the Xbox Series X has a 315 watt power supply and is obviously not getting anywhere near that with those games. And then they went on to test some more interesting stuff. So between the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series X, they tested Rise of the Tomb Raider and Dead or Alive 6. So with Rise of the Tomb Raider, it was pretty interesting because on the Xbox One X, it's at 4K at 30 FPS, and they ran the same thing with the Xbox Series X, but obviously the Xbox Series X has a little bit of upgrading graphics, better texture filtering and stuff like that, and it was drawing less wattage, so it's a more efficient console with Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is really cool to see that even though the console is more powerful, with these backwards compatible games, it's gonna be more efficient in the way they run. And then they went on to test Dead or Alive 6 and saying that this is where it really shows off how efficient the console actually is because Dead or Alive 6 on the Xbox One X is in native 4K, but it goes around, I'd say 30 to 40 frames per second. Whereas on the Xbox Series X, it's locked to 60 FPS and a native 4K, and it's still more efficient than the Xbox One X version. Then they finally went on to talk about Gears 5, and Gears 5, as we know, is getting a big update for the Xbox Series X. So here saying the smart delivery system delivers a revamped version of the game that draws upon the new capabilities of the system. Yes, it may be a patch to an existing game, but it does leverage the new RDNA 2 architecture and its various features, including variable rate shading. And in my previous video, you can really see the difference in the way that Gears 5 looks on the Xbox Series X compared to the One X, and I think honestly, it is a big improvement. So with Gears 5, the power draw was around 200 watts and peaking at 211 watts. So it's interesting, this is by far the most power hungry game out of everything that was tested. Now what that kind of makes me think is that Gears 5 is really the first game that we're going to see on the Xbox Series X that is kind of taking more advantage of the Xbox Series X's power. Even though we have Dirt 5 and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which are launch games coming up for the Xbox Series X, you can tell they're still really just playing off of their last gen counterparts because they are cross gen games. And Gears 5 is a cross-gen game but the coalition is a first-party studio of Microsoft and they've been working on this Gears 5 update for the Xbox Series X for a long time we first saw it in March and it was at 60 FPS now they're coming on they're showing it at 4k 120 FPS which is absolutely crazy so 
Gears 5 is definitely going to be that game that I think everyone will want to boot up when they get their Xbox Series X just to see what the Series X can do, especially with an older game, and give you sort of a glimpse into the future of when first party studios have time, have resources, and can really draw that power out of the Xbox Series X. You're going to get some amazing things out of it. Now we get on to the thermals. The thing that has been completely blown out of proportion with the Xbox Series X, when those pre release consoles got sent out to the media, a few people who had them said that the Xbox Series X was hot. Now they were just saying that it was hot, it was running hot, or that it was posted stuff like that and those quotes got completely taken out of proportion which usually happens at the lead up to a console because you have people that want things to be true that probably aren't true and that is to say that people were saying the xbox series x had overheating issues because it was running warm or hot however you want to put it but based off of these tests from digital foundry we can really see that the xbox series x is running optimally there is no heating issues yes it's warm but it is a console it's going to expel hot air but besides that everything is looking good right now. So it says here, you can see that the metal sandwich core of the processor and south bridge boards are the center of heat and a 48 to 49 degrees Celsius skin temperature on the console is the result. It feels warm to the touch, but not hot, which I mean, it's completely normal. It's going to feel warm. When you guys get your Series Xs in your house, you start playing games in it, you touch it, it's going to feel warm and that's okay. Now they go on to say here that the bottom of the unit actually feels cold to the touch, especially around mostly dormant optical drive, which is essentially at room temperature. So in the video, I think he showed it off. It was at like 22, 23 degrees Celsius, which is like room temperature. The unit is designed to funnel in cool air from the base, take it through the console, then propel it out of the top. And that's where you find the ultimate heat center for the console. Here I noted a maximum of 62 degrees Celsius, hotter than any console I've tested before, which is not surprising as this is the most powerful console that I've tested. Now 62 degrees Celsius is completely fine. It's not a temperature for any concern. It's not gonna overheat. It's not gonna melt the motherboard or anything like that. It's a completely fine temperature at its hottest point. And it's at the top, which makes complete sense because that is where the heat is expelling and that's all the hot air is going to be concentrated out of and we've gone over this in my previous videos basically talking about how it is taking that cool air pushing it up through the top and then expelling that hot air with that fan that they have and it seems like this build that they have for the xbox series x is really well designed and it's doing what it's supposed to do which just really takes away any concern that i have about this console overheating or having issues in the future now obviously when the consoles release into the wild we are going to have to see how it really functions and they say here definitely don't put it in a small area you definitely want to keep your console ventilated which should be something you do with all your consoles no matter which one because the console needs room to breathe and it needs room to expel that hot air and get it out of the console get it away from there now i was doing a little test on my rtx 2080 which i have on my pc just to see how hot it would get when running gears 5 and 4k and my gpu was generally getting up to around 65 to 68 degrees Celsius, my 2080. So the fact that this is 62, I don't know if this is a good comparison. This isn't science. This is me just kind of doing a quick little test to see what the difference in heat was and running a game that is definitely stressful to my GPU, having it on ultra settings at 4K and seeing how hot it gets comparing it to the 62 degrees Celsius. My RTX 2080 definitely got hotter than 62 degrees Celsius when playing the game. And there's nothing wrong with that heat on my RTX. It's completely fine. It's running perfect. My PC tower actually doesn't get very hot at all. And when I put my hand over the top of my PC tower when I'm playing and my GPU is going and I hear the fans going and everything, I feel that hot air coming out, which is a good thing. So basically, the sum it up is the Xbox Series X is efficient. It runs cool. It's quiet. He even said that it runs whisper quiet. You don't hear it. It's a really exciting next generation console, and I'm extremely excited to get it into my hands. And one thing with these games with the power wads, you can really tell that Yakuza Like a Dragon and Dirt 5 are more along the power consumption of Rise of the Tomb Raider and Dead of Alive 6, which is a last generation game. So you can really see that those games aren't really taking the full power of the Xbox Series X. So they're not gonna be the best showcase games for that console. And then as we move on to Gears 5 here, really getting those updates, being a first party developer studio, which had lots of resources and time to work with the Series X is getting more power consumption. And I think as we get further on into the generation, more games that come out for the Series X that are built for the Series X, definitely are gonna draw more power, definitely are gonna create more heat in the console. But I think the console is definitely well built to withstand that heat. Digital Fantasy summing it all up saying, I can only see good news that come out of these results of the tests. First of all, there's no need to worry about the Series X's power consumption or thermals. It's more demanding than the consoles we already own, but there's almost a sense that the thermal solution is over-engineered when the overall power draw 
2018 thus far at least, it's only a relatively small step away from the One X. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because it's great news for the Xbox Series X. It puts the overheating speculation to rest. I don't think there's going to be any overheating problems. There's really nothing to worry about on that end. And I honestly think that the next generation of consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, are both going to have very minimal issues at launch, which will be a great thing for us. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you still have concerns over the Xbox Series X heating? What do you think about the efficiency of the Xbox Series X and how excited are you to get your Xbox Series X? Thank you guys all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you dislike to hit that thumbs down button. If you'd like to see, hey, maybe consider subscribing. I really appreciate everybody's support. It'd be really cool to grow this channel to 1K subscribers. And if it happens, we'll definitely do some sort of giveaway, some sort of celebration for it. It'd be a lot of fun. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.